James here from the Gator Nation Football Podcast, bringing you a film breakdown of Florida's offense versus Kentucky's defense. This obviously was not a great day for the Gators. I'll show you what went wrong, what went right in some regards, and what this potentially means for the rest of Florida's season. As always, if you like this content, subscribe to the channel, follow us on social media, drop us a dono on Patreon where you can support our efforts to bring you this type of content each and every week, and check out the podcast every Monday where we bring you in-depth analytical content on the Florida Gators. Let's start by looking at the second play of the game. Of course, if you've watched this channel for quite some time now, you know that the reason I do a film review is because the film doesn't lie. It tells you exactly what goes on. Each week, I look at the All-22. Unfortunately, the All-22 companies will not let me show you the All-22. It's copyrighted, so I have to use the television feed. So I draw uh, where people are or where they're going or what happened so I can tell you exactly what the routes were and exactly what actually happened as best as I can tell. I feel like each week I have to give this disclaimer because somebody writes me or gives me a comment that I certainly can't know every single play, which is completely true. I don't. Uh, but putting together things on film gives you a pretty good idea of what's right, wrong, or indifferent. And of course, if you look at the team each and every week, you can start to get a pretty good understanding of what Florida is trying to do. But most importantly, what film review really does without knowing exactly what every single play call is or primary read or protection or etc., is it shows you how each team is handling the chess match of football, how they're trying to match up with each other based upon the tactics they're employing on the field. And so looking at the second play of the game after Kentucky jumped off sides shows us right in the beginning some of the keys for Kentucky and how they felt like they were going to be able to slow down Florida's rushing attack. And the secret to their game plan, which really isn't a secret, they're going to show it right here, is essentially to have all 11 guys looking at the football as often as they can for as long as they can. Now, the least likely people to be looking at the football post-snap are going to be your corners. However, depending on the formation, depending on where the boundary corner is, the boundary corner is the player that's on the near side or closer side to the sideline, depending on how that is or what that situation looks like, you may have all 11 players looking into the backfield in this particular play, which Florida is going to run his own read. You are going to have Kentucky having eyes in the backfield, especially from their nickel back at all times during the game and both of their safeties. Now, Kentucky likes to run too high in their shell and then rotate a safety down or both safeties down. But again, the primary difference with how Kentucky played Florida this year was that they didn't believe that Emory Jones and Florida could consistently pass against them down the field. So they were going to do all they could to take away the run. There are several things they did throughout this game to add some wrinkles. But as we start off, Florida's going to run his own read. They're going to take a page out of a lot of teams' books, which is to put immediate pressure here on the running back and force Emory to keep it. So we're going to overrun this, play the running back. That's going to allow Gamble to do what he often does, which is skip that. Not going to block the unblocked man. Come out here to then get a block. But what's happening is you're getting an excellent early start here from the corner. His eyes never left the backfield. His eyes never left the backfield as soon as the ball is snapped, although you can't see his head right here. It is right here, and he is looking at the play. He's not looking at Copeland, and you can see the same thing is going on here. He actually has his eyes in the backfield right here. His head is looking at the play. He is not looking at Whittemore, and that is what allows Kentucky to quickly see that Emory has kept the ball. Here he comes. He beats the block because he's faster to the spot. He then gets the edge control here, forcing Emory to turn. Gamble tries to make a quick low block. Not enough, he gets in the way and he makes the tackle as Kentucky has multiple other defenders converging. So throughout this film review, you are going to see that. I'm not going to keep bringing it up uh, aside from when it becomes the key to the play, but just know to look for it on each one of these plays. You can watch, especially again, the slot, the slot corner, linebackers, both safeties. You can take a look at their eyes on almost every single play. They're going to be looking into the backfield, even past the snap, watching the play fake, not paying as close of attention to their receivers as they typically would if they feared the pass, basically saying they were comfortable giving Emory Jones bigger windows with the trade-off that they would slow down Florida's run game. Second and one for Florida. Florida's going to run almost all hitches here on this play. You're going to get a motion from Shorter. He's going to run a little out route. Gamble's going to run a hitch. 
why hitches? Of course, we mentioned in previous film breakdowns that Emery's favorite route is definitely a hitch. In fact, he throws almost every route as a hitch. What do I mean by that? I mean that if he's running a go route, he pretty much wants to throw it, so the receiver has to turn back around and catch it with his numbers facing him. Those are most of Emery's throws. He wants to throw it to someone's face mask, to someone's chest. He wants to see the target. He is not super comfortable, at least on film, throwing a full route tree. He'd much rather put the ball into someone's chest or make easier throws like out routes, um, in routes, quick digs, balls. He can throw it right to someone's numbers that are comfortable. Uh, Dan Mullen, of course, knows this. In fact, this game featured more actual hitch routes than any other game we've seen so far. And this makes sense because Dan Mullen is counting on teams to begin to take away these wrinkles that Florida has been successfully able to employ each week. When you have a running back at quarterback, in the case of Emory Jones, you are very limited with what you can do in the passing game. And this is going to force you to have to get creative each and every week by staying one step ahead of your competition because you're manufacturing things in the pass game. You can't just line up and say, if Kentucky's going to take away my running game, if they're going to always play plus numbers against my run, I will just run these sort of route combos. That's not where Florida is. So they have to manufacture their passing game with comfortable throws that Emory can make consistently. It's basically a lot of window dressing for Florida to move the ball down the field. Uh, And Kentucky, of course, was susceptible to this, as you're going to see on this play. And Emory Jones did a nice job throwing these routes. These are the routes he's comfortable throwing. Let's watch Whittemore here in the slide. He's going to run this hitch right over the linebacker's head. Here he comes. He's going to sit right behind the linebacker. He's just running a zone route. Turn over the linebacker. Emery's waiting for it. Nice protection here in the pocket. Here it is. Emery's just waiting for him to clear. As soon as he clears, puts the ball right to his face mask. Here it is, right? Stationary target. Throw it to his chest. Uh, Put it right to someone, which he does, for a nice completion on second and one um, here from Florida. So pay attention again as this one goes down to see just how many of these routes Emery completes have the receiver facing back into the backfield it's going to be most of them including the interception which was supposed to be a go route which we'll see later which emery predominantly throws as a hitch again this is just an issue he has with his technique and ability as a quarterback he's just not comfortable putting the ball into space into windows early he'd much rather see someone come open and then put the ball to them same drive here first and 10 for florida now florida knows and you can already see that okay if your slot nickel is going to be looking in Let's watch the nickel back here. I'm just going to roll this for you. If he's going to be looking in almost the whole time, as he is, and he really wants to play the run, he's not really going to watch Whittem more than we can just run a route here to run off the corner and let's take a simple little out route. Now, in this combination, you're actually going to have a little a little in here, a little hitch in, which is also open on the outside. And then you have Whittemore right away, and Emery's going to make the play fake. And immediately, we have nice spacing here, nice spacing here because he was looking into the backfield. Now, this is a pass play. Whittemore, of course, has separation. You're going to see Shorter come into your screen. He'll be open on this curl as well. And Florida takes, or Emory in this case, takes the nice comfortable gain on first down. So nice play design. If you know the team wants to overlook into the backfield, you can create some leverage and some space and punish them with easy throws. First read, first option, easy throws, which allows Florida to move the football. Second and three for Florida. I thought Kentucky had a lot of success in this game basically playing to Florida's tendencies. You're going to watch their defensive end, make sure that he gets outside here to set the edge. Outside on the weak side, on the strong side, you're going to get some nice action with their best defensive lineman who wreaked havoc on Florida. We highlighted him on the podcast all week long, Josh Paschal. He is going to move inside, and then we're going to have an excellent step here from the stand-up linebacker on the end, and he is also going to immediately just attempt to beat Kamori Gamble to the inside spot. He's not going to worry about anything other than trying to cross his face to put pressure on the interior part of the line. The reason this is going to work and work so well is if Kentucky is able to generate pressure here, if they're able to generate pressure here in this C gap right here, if they can come through this, that's going to create problems for Florida. And you're going to see that he beats Gamble to it. They're then going to immediately bring a linebacker to replace. So essentially by being the first mover with pressure into the backfield, and we're going to stop it right here, even if he doesn't win this battle and Gamble's able to block him, if Florida's going to run a zone read, then there's still one-on-one right here with, take a look, nickel defender looking into the backfield. This ball's handed off. He's then going to be the second defender there to come help. 
and Kentucky is in a good position. They're controlling the edge over here in case Emery keeps it with a help defender here on the outside. And they have the interior covered. So again, they are overplaying the run on this particular play. They only have one safety. They're playing Florida man-to-man -man here in the receiving core. And that's going to allow them to have maximum eyeballs in the backfield. And of course, if they win, which they do here, it's just going to be that much better for Kentucky. They win and they quickly get into Florida's backfield, putting Malik Davis down for a loss on second and three. We've not seen a lot of teams do this to Florida but the more you put your tendencies on film and the more teams don't fear your ability to pass, you become one-dimensional, they are creating defensive fronts, alignments, twists, and stunts to put pressure on you and the plays you want to run to see if you have something to answer for that. Third down and six for Florida, the first third down of the game. Florida's going to motion out Malik Davis. So essentially you have four receivers in this formation. Also have an eligible tight end right here. So Florida will frequently send five wide out, or they can obviously block Gamble or Zipper or do whatever they want with that position to threaten the defense. But in this case, Kentucky doesn't really buy it. They think Florida wants to run, even though it's third and six, even though it's on the 45-yard line here. They think Florida wants to run. So what are they going to do? They're going to bring some pressure here. Again, this, is, this can be a linebacker or a nickel. It doesn't really matter. It's the same concept. They're going to bring pressure here. From the slot, they're going to have their safety come down while keeping his eyes in the backfield to cover Whittemore. They're going to rotate here to have a single high safety. And we're going to make sure we're checked up here, all while keeping eyes in the backfield. So as we start this off, I want you to look in Kentucky's eyes here. Right now, the ball snapped. Eyes in the backfield. Eyes in the backfield. Eyes in the backfield. Right? So they're giving no real credence to Florida's passing attack, and they're correct on this play. They are also going to do something very smart here. The reason Florida is spreading them out is they want to get numbers. Florida with two, four, five, and six. Kentucky with two, four, and six. So it's six on six. Florida likes this because this is the seventh player with a single high safety here. As long as Florida can win this battle up front blocking, they should be able to get to the four or five yard mark and then have a one-on-one -on -one most likely versus the safety. If he comes up too hot, he's not going to matter. He can't get him. And this is the whole play plan, but take a look at what Kentucky does. Very nice move. Again, here's their best defensive lineman, Josh Pascal. He's going to come around the edge, and he is going to come in hot here to force Emery through the hole Emery wants to go through. But what Kentucky does, which is very smart, is they are going to bring this action rather than just blindly chase, which you see lots of college football teams do. We're going to read the action Emery wants to run. We know this is the gap Florida's created, and now our unblocked defender is going to fill this gap. Florida's not accounting for him. There's no accounting for him whatsoever. We can see we're accounted for here. We're hoping to get to the safety here, but the reason this play is not going to work is he is going to save it right here now again if we freeze this and imagine that he is in the backfield here next to josh pascal emory jones is running in this lane here's your first down here's the likely defender to try and stop him florida probably converts for a first down but kentucky expecting florida to have an action like this clearly practice this a whole lot during the week they see this action they know where emory wants to go he's going to beat him to the spot and make the tackle stopping him two yards shy of the first down. Again, this is what happens throughout the season when you're putting a ton of stuff on film. Teams recognize what you want to do and they make it harder for you to do it. Mark Stoops had his boys ready to play sound, disciplined defense, especially in the front seven. And their linebacker play was especially impactful at stopping Florida's run in this football game. Florida was still able to have success rushing the football in this game. It was just that they were stopped more frequently in more situations. Here's an example of a successful running play early in the game. We're going to run to the right. Here's DeLance getting a nice block. Ethan White, we've talked a lot about as a guard, being able to pull around quickly and use his speed and strength. There it is. Let's steer him out of our hole. Very nice. We're going to run this ball inside in between the tackles. There it is. Good work by DeLance to continue pushing this outside. And we're not going to have Pierce get touched until he's already at the first down marker right here. And that is a nice gain for Florida on first down. Early in this football game, you may have thought, hey, Florida's got something here. They're able to run the ball when they want, even if Kentucky expects it. Uh, of course, as we're going to see in this film review, sometimes that was true and sometimes that was not true. 
For Florida fans, including myself, we finally have the long-awaited return of Anthony Richardson from his hamstring. Like me, most Florida fans probably wanted to see more of him than what we saw with Kentucky. Perhaps they were even hoping it was going to be a Kyle Trask come in towards the end of the game and rescue Florida situation. It was not to be, but here on the very first play, we can see what makes Anthony Richardson special. Even just as a runner, Kentucky is all over this play. Here again comes Josh Paschal, who was a terror. Florida had a really hard time with him. He exposed them in a lot of ways. And then here's a nice zone read by Anthony Richardson. Clearly, you don't want to hand this ball off. That's dead. And in fact, technically, Anthony Richardson's dead because look at this. Kentucky is just waiting for him. Again, a really nice rotation. These are only three down linemen. Florida should be able to win this battle up front. They are selling out this action here. They want to hand this ball off to Pierce. This is the numbers they have. Kentucky, I want you to look again. Kentucky, eyes in the backfield, 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 eyes in the backfield. Everybody is looking into the backfield. You have all 11 players saying Florida's a running team. They want to run the football and they're ready for this. And now he is standing in the hole waiting for Anthony Richardson. He has everything that he wants. Unfortunately, Richardson is going to give him just a little jab step to the right. And then he's no longer there to even touch him. That's right. Dive, touch him. He can't touch him. And Richardson takes what should be a no gain and turns it into a first down. Now, we have talked a lot about Emery's inability to break tackles, although Emery functions as a competent runner. He rarely breaks tackles, rarely makes people miss. He largely is successful because of the scheme and his ability to zone read it. Here's an example of Anthony Richardson, someone who's broken a lot of tackles, made a lot of people miss already in his short rushing career at Florida. Does it right here. Takes a zero play that Kentucky's ready for and turns it into a positive play for a first down. Florida likes to throw on first and 10. Kentucky actually knows this, as we'll see a little bit later in this film review. But here, Florida's going to run a deep hitch route. Deep hitch route to Henderson, which is going to be open. And Florida could have a touchdown if we threw to the slot here, as they're going to allow this go route in the seam to be uncovered. Safety's going to rotate here towards this side of the field. If Emery simply opens up and hits this one, it's going to be a touchdown. However, from watching Emery on film a whole lot, uh, as I've mentioned before, he's not someone who really makes a lot of reads. This almost certainly is going to be his pre-snap read and first read and really only place he's going with the ball. Despite the fact, despite the fact that as we look here on the snap, there's nothing wrong with going here. Right away, if you look at the numbers, he has three here versus three here, safety shaded to that side. That's four for Kentucky, three versus Florida. You've heard me talk a lot about the numbers game, how important that is when playing football. Pre-snap as a quarterback, you're typically going to close the field down in half and start by taking your numbers advantage side. If you can't tell, you're going to make your best guess based upon pre-snap motion, other information you'll gather. So in this case, going down to this side is perfectly fine. And that's exactly where Emery's going to go. He's going to take the snap. He's going to keep his eyes here on the safety, which he should do in the middle of the field. And then he's going to come down to his hitch route and complete this. Chest facing Emery, pass he likes, for a nice big first down. Now, what's the critique here? Am I just overly critiquing Emery, as some people like to say? No, I'm not. I'm always letting you know as a quarterback, what can we put on film that would indicate something better? Now, if you're Emery, you're the quarterback, you know what routes that you have. You know that in this seam, you have a seam go route. That's important. Why is that important? Because you want to know exactly what you're running. You also have a hitch route here. So you can watch this corner. He's going to be your read man. You can watch this corner. You can basically get a view, a snapshot of what's happening on this side of the field and decide whether or not you have something. So let's play out how this could have worked. Emery takes the snap as he drops back into his shotgun drop. He's going to read the safety. The safety is going to go off your screen, but he is going to be moving this way, which indicates he's clearing space in this direction. Emery knows he has a deep hitch here. He now has time to look at the safety, ID the safety coming here, move his eyes here, and take a look to see what he has. On this side of the field here, he now gets to read this corner. If the corner off your screen drops, but does not, but does not take an inside route here, he has this seam route for a touchdown. This ball is simply thrown to the inside of the field right here between the hash, and it's in between the safety, in between the safety who'd be here, and the dropping cover three corner who's there. He also, of course, if this corner drops, has a safe throw here 
on the hitch. So ideally, he'd look at the safety, see the safety shifts here, take a glance here and see what he sees. He knows he's got a home run ball. It's a touchdown if it's there. If he doesn't like that, he then comes back right on time and throws this hitch route. Now that's, again, optimal quarterbacking. Emery, of course, despite being in the program for a long time, just doesn't have those technical skills yet. So Emery's going to instead look at the safety, know the safety can't get to his hitch route, and he's already coming to his hitch route. And look, here's the line of scrimmage, right? Xavier Henderson's like four yards off the line of scrimmage. So now he's just basically waiting, 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 throw the hitch. Now that's fine. That's fine. It's a completion. It's college football. It's nice. Nothing wrong with that. But since my job on film review is to show you how to maximize a play, these guys aren't just running these routes for no reason. Now, sometimes they're running dummy routes. This is not a dummy route. This is a live route for sure. And once this safety comes here, Emory has time in his drop to then ID this and decide what he likes. Florida, of course, again, not at this level passing even remotely. The reason I show you all of this is Kentucky knows this. They gambled. They banked on this. And throughout this film review, Florida is going to have receivers that are open as we have here wide open in the seam. I wish I could show it to you in the All-22, uh, but trust me, it's there. And they banked on the fact that Florida would not be hitting vertical plays. They were not going to take those deep throws because Emory doesn't like to make them. It's not how he sees the football field. And they were willing to give up these hitches, full well knowing Emory was comfortable with them, hoping, of course, that would keep the game close and allow them to stay within striking distance, which is exactly what happened. For Florida's offense to have success, it largely hangs on Dan Mullen's shoulders being able to script up good first read options for Emory. As we've said before, Dan Mullen's very, very good at that. In this particular game, when you're working with a limited quarterback, Dan Mullen only has so many things he can do. And of course, it's easy to say he struggled significantly with regards to the play calling. I would argue a lot of it has to do with the selection of the quarterback, limiting what he's able to do. In fact, I might argue that how Dan Mullen handles Emory Jones is pretty wise. That's a backhanded way of saying he probably shouldn't be the starting quarterback for Florida because his ceiling is too low. But Dan Mullen tries to put him in situations that he can be successful in. It's just a limited range of what he can do. And that, of course, is the problem. But if Dan Mullen can get the looks that he likes, which he's going to get here, Florida's going to go to a two-by-two two look. They're going to flare out Pierce, which they like to do to try to hold in this case, the nickel on this side or a linebacker or whoever happens to be over there. Let's call them the middle defender. That's what's going to wind up happening. You have three defenders here. The middle defender, whoever it may be, is going to typically be responsible for the flat. But really, all we're trying to do is hit a nice little hitch route here because Kentucky's off. They're playing soft in this play. And why are they off? It's first down and 10. They've done their homework. They know Florida likes to take a lot of their shot plays on first down and 10. Demo knows this, so we're just going to open up right away. Emery's going to ID the fact that this coverage is backed off. He has his hitch route, and he's going to take it. That ball's on time. It's a good throw. It allows Henderson to turn up field and gain even more yards. It's a perfect hitch route delivery from Emery. Uh, that's a nice ball and a nicely designed play on first down and 10. On Florida's second drive, they have a wrinkle for Kentucky now on second down and one. So last time we looked at a play like this and Florida wanted to run his own read, we saw that Kentucky wanted to penetrate here to the inside in the C-gap. They wanted to put immediate pressure into the backfield, and they were going to have their linebacker fill behind while allowing their corner and their nickels to be looking into the backfield. There's their safety as well. So what does Florida counter with? A really nice play design. One, Gamble this time is going to take his first step inside. Take a look at that. He steps inside to seal this off, make sure he doesn't get beat in here. And then we're going to have Garage pull all the way from here your left tackle now is going to become a pulling guard all the way across the formation. Very unique design. You don't see this super often, even from Florida. And that is going to allow the linebacker to get stuck here in the C-gap. There it is. Garage is going to meet him because you don't have a guard pulling. Ethan White's not pulling. You get a linebacker that comes outside here. He has to account for Emery in case he comes out. Really nice play design to allow Pierce to essentially come through the C-gap here untouched all the way until he gets to the seven-yard line. So nice work there from Dan Mullen, knowing what Kentucky wants to do, knowing what they're taking away, and then running something just a little bit different to be able to gain a big first down for Florida. Second and goal for Florida in the red zone. Florida struggled in this game. Of course, all season long, 
Although they've had some success, especially against weaker opponents, Florida's playbook gets pretty limited in the red zone. They tend to want to throw a screen pass and east-west pass. We talked a lot in the Tennessee game about Florida being able to gadget open receivers and that Florida's success, as we say in the podcast each week, is largely dependent upon Dan Mullen's ability to get Emory Jones open first read throws. Well, here's an example of a first read throw that goes for a touchdown that Kentucky is all over. They're all over this play. They're ready for this play. They're going to line up here 4v3, showing Florida pre-snap that you don't have this. Don't go there. Then they're going to bring a slot pressure to make sure Emory can't run. We're going to also take away any throw in this lane by alignment. And now we have a free unblocked defender coming downhill one-on-one to stop Jaquavion Frazier's, who really it's one of his first touches here as a Gator. He got he got run here early in this game as a starter, essentially. And by starter, I mean he played in the first couple of drives. As you see him playing here, he is a four-star, highly touted guy, top 150-ish guy for Florida, wearing number zero, catches this pass. This is, he's look, he's being met right here, right? This is going to be a no-game play, except he whiffs the tackle. And then nice work by Frazier's here to finish this really excellent stretch. Of course, you saw this in the broadcast. Fantastic finish by Frazier's to get in the end zone here. But this is not a win for the offense. If you're looking at sustainability for Florida's offense, if you're Dan Mullen right now, you are happy you scored a touchdown here. But this is not like previous weeks when you're throwing the ball to a wide open Rick Wells who came across the formation and no one's covering him. You got lucky with this one because Kentucky is all over what you want to do. And so you steal a touchdown here on second down. You're going to take it. You're happy about it. But that's not a play call that led to a touchdown. That was a player that rescued a play there that was not perfect. And again, this is not at all to blame Dan Mullen's play calling ability. Um, Every play caller has good days and bad days. Of course, I spend plenty of time trying to analyze those good days and bad days. I'll analyze it here on film. But it's really important to contextualize that I think a lot of Dan Mullen's problems come from being the CEO owner and GM of Florida, so to speak, and they do as an offensive coordinator. If someone else was selecting the personnel, you're going to play this quarterback over that quarterback. I think Dan Mullen has proven he can build packages that highlight that quarterback's specific skill set. I think Dan Mullen gets into trouble when he marries himself to a certain quarterback despite their limitations, and then you get squeezed into tighter and tighter and tighter windows where eventually it's very hard to consistently outscheme your opponents to give yourself open throws when they are limiting the places on the field you can go to. So it's a good example of Florida scoring a touchdown early, but doing it with a look that was not, that was not in all likelihood a high probability of success based upon the look Kentucky gave Florida. Several things to look at on this play, and let's let me start speeding up a little bit what's happening so we can get through these plays faster. I try to spend a little bit more up front kind of talking about a lot of the themes of this game strategically, and now we're just gonna go through these plays faster so you can get a feel for what exactly is happening. Emory Jones is gonna miss this throw. We're gonna have a hitch route here from Copeland. He's gonna slip a little bit, ball's gonna be thrown outside, but another missed opportunity from Florida here on second and eight. I want you to look at the top of the screen. Florida, again, in a similar alignment we saw before, running the same exact route combo. We have a hitch here, and we have a go up the seam. Kentucky safety right now is in the middle of the field, right? So if you're Emory, you're three by three with a safety over here. Now you want to ID this safety, and if he stays in the middle of the field, you better believe you want to check this matchup because, again, you can come back to this hitch. ID the safety, Safety stays here or slides this way. Take a quick glance up here. If you get what you want, put this ball out here, score a touchdown. Let's imagine this happens. Let's imagine Emery's IDing the safety, which he's looking at the safety right now. Again, we've talked a lot about his shifty eyes being too quick at times to leave him. Now he's had a nice long look. This is the appropriate time to look at the safety. He now knows that safety's sitting single high in the middle of the field. And in fact, he shifted more here towards the true middle of the field. Florida, of course, on the short side of the field. Let's take a look up here and see what we have. And what do we have but a touchdown? Now, look, if you're thinking, if you're thinking, hey, he wouldn't have done this. Oh, he would have done this. Why? Because his eyes are not in the backfield. He has no idea that DeLance has just gotten beat by Pascal here. Let's watch this one more time. Here's DeLance. You're going to see this several times in this game. Things we've known about on film. It's been on film. Film doesn't lie. 
Delance struggles in pass protection. There's Pascal beating him, forces Emery to move off the spot. Emery does a nice job here keeping his eyes downfield. I like what I see from Emery here. Eyes are downfield. Unfortunately, he doesn't reset his throw, which is going to lead to a bad throw. But, but had his eyes instead been moving here, he feels the pressure. He steps up into this pocket. He is going to see this. This right here is a touchdown. There is nobody on this side of the field. See these hash marks here all the way to the edge? There's no one over there. There's nothing but green grass and a touchdown here on second and eight. Instead, he's locked into his hitch. It's really the only route he wants to throw in the first place. He does a nice job sliding up here. He needs to slide all the way up. He's not set yet. He's basically sliding into the throw rather than setting his feet. And then he's going to do what he typically does, which is finish with this foot barely driving through. No real drive. That's going to lead to inaccurate throws. Copeland does slip out of his break. He slips. Either way, ball's still too far outside. Copeland may make a diving catch or a difficult catch, uh, but this ball's thrown outside. Florida misses a chance for an easy completion and a first down, but more importantly, they miss a chance for a touchdown. And you can see this at the top of your screen right here. There he is. The closest Kentucky player to him is here. That's touchdown. Now, again, you can say, well, wait a minute, you know, James, you don't know the play, etc. But I can tell you for sure that if you're quarterbacking and you know you're three by three, here's your pre-snap read. I know I'm three by three. Down here, I'm two by two. I have a single high safety. I need to see what happens post-snap. Bingo. Linebackers stay under. No one's dropping. No one's getting depth. We're flat here. Safety stays toward this part of the field. You have got to ID your home run play. Now, of course, I do not know if Florida's even allowing Emery to ID a home run play. I have no idea if he's stuck on a half-field read or not. Just illustrating to you that if Florida's going to run these routes, they're there for a reason. They're not always dummy routes. And 3x3 three three pre-snap of me, you want to look there. And if he did look there, it's touchdown instead. He's going to settle for the hitch. I think he settles for the hitch because the hitch routes are the routes he wants to throw anyway. And I think Dan Mullen gave him a healthy dose of those in this game. Florida obviously struggled significantly with false starts. Eight of them in this football game. Florida's going to use what most college football teams like to use now. This is the clap cadence. Focus in in here, the clap cadence. There's one clap, two claps. Now Florida can snap the ball for any beat or measure of time afterwards. It could be right after the second clap. It could be one or two beats after the second clap. Teams do that differently to throw off defensive linemen. But the clap cadence was popularized by none other than Urban Meyer. He likes the clap because he feels like you can hear it. No matter what kind of crowd noise you have, the clap essentially cuts through the crowd noise, and that way all of your players can hear the clap. Why is this helpful? It allows all of your offensive linemen to keep their head up looking at the defense. That's why they like the clap cadence. If you're going to use your leg like a lot of NFL teams do or you're going to go with a silent count, then everyone is going to have to either watch the ball or in this case the linemen are going to have to watch the center to see what's going off, which just for a split second takes their eyes off who they want to block. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but if you struggle with the clap cadence and it can't be heard and your center is having a really hard time hearing it and everything is thrown off and you're false starting, as we see Florida do here, you probably got to change it. Now, Nick Saban came in, used a clap, cadence against, a clap cadence against Florida in the swamp, and quickly after the first quarter changed it. They still had some false starting issues in that game because crowd noise will do that to inexperienced teams. But in the case of Florida, they made no change. They went with the clap cadence the entire time. Occasionally, and I'm not going to show you every play this occurs, occasionally Ethan White would also tap Kingsley to let him know it's time to snap the ball. That's another way to do it. There's a lot of different ways to handle snapping the football in college and the NFL. But it certainly seemed like Florida was unwilling to abandon what they had been done with the clap cadence. They didn't really have another backup, whether it be lifting the leg or putting your hand down or a silent count entirely, something more safe to make sure they didn't take third and one and make it third and 13. That's frustrating. That's obviously frustrating. Uh, if something is optimal in theory and it allows your offensive lineman to get off the ball a bit quicker and see what's in front of them, that's great. If it's no longer optimal and you're continually messing it up, you got to make a change on the road so you can win the football game. Florida, of course, really did not make any significant change to that clap cadence. And that hurt them significantly in this game, taking situations that were already bad for Florida, third and eight, and making it third and 13. Third and 13 for Florida. You're not going to be able to see this, but you're going to get a post route from Whittemore. I don't know what happened there. A post route from Whittemore. You're going to get a dig route from Copeland. And Copeland is going to be open. That's where you want the ball to go is to Copeland. Uh, even if Emery's looking there, which he's not, he's not going to get it there because 
DeLance is going to get beat by a speed rush to the edge, which of course, if you've watched anything from us last year or listened to the podcast, this is DeLance extreme weakness. And again, Florida, I don't know who else to say this. Apparently it just doesn't really care what gets put on film when it comes to DeLance pass protection. This is predictable. It's consistent. To me, it's inexcusable. You have to try anyone else and everyone else at right tackle. You cannot allow this to continually happen in football games that matter, but Florida does it. So there's a little bit of airing of grievances there for myself from watching it on film all the time. But here comes the speed rush right around the edge. You're getting a three-man rush with a late pressure here from the fourth, which is really just a spy for Emery in case he wants to run. And if we had any hopes and dreams of throwing this dig route, which again, Emery is not looking at, you can already tell by his eyes that he just wants to throw this check down here. That's where he's really going to go anyway. He's going here anyway. And now the pressure comes and he's definitely going there. And he completes a nice check down pass, but it's third and 13. We have no shot of making it. So even if, even if Emery's eyes went to the proper place, which is going to be here for this dig route that actually has a chance to make it for the first down, no chance he's making that throw because he's going to get hit, going to get sacked. He's going to go down. Check down here is just fine. But this has happened on film far, far too often. The fact that Florida refuses to make a change there is beyond me. Kentucky had really good gap control out of their base 3-4 defense. This is the first play of the second quarter. It's second down and one, and they also had some nice play design to it. They're going to take their three down linemen, and each of them is going to employ a different technique. We've got a zero here or maybe a one technique from this angle from the nose tackle. He's going to take on this double team. We've got a two eye or an inside technique here from the end, and he's going to occupy here. In this case, Florida's guard to the inside, making sure he takes away the A-gap. And then the defensive end over here is going to take a five technique and then push to the outside. So we're going to control all of the interior gaps here. But the creative thing Kentucky does is they're going to take their unblocked defender and they're going to have him tightly pursue anything that flows here for Florida to the weak side of this formation. Now, why is that a good idea? Essentially because they're going to replace it with the linebacker here. This is a good idea because Florida frequently likes to pull either their guard or even occasionally their tackle across the formation. And as we watch this play in real time, here it comes. DeLance is going to be the right tackle pulling across the formation. We are just going to follow this play. And the reason he can follow this play is he has help here. He has help here from the strong side linebacker who's going to fill his place in case Emery keeps this football. So we've got nice gap coverage all the way across the board. And that allows the unblocked defender who typically is sitting here waiting and watching the read to actually come make this play. Really good run defensive design here from Kentucky. Even if Florida gets all the blocking they want and they're able to get the Lance through the hole here to get to the middle linebacker, it's going to be all for naught because this play is stopped by the unblocked man who is supposed to get ate up by the zone read. So really, really nice gap control. Again, Kentucky was very successful because of their gap control. Let me pause it right here. Control the outside. Control the outside. Unblocked man waiting to see where the play goes, right? Plug up the A gap. Plug up the B gap. Off the edge here. Immediate pursuit of the play in case it goes to the running back. Strong side linebacker waiting here now for Emery in case he comes out. And then you're going to have eyes on the backfield here from your slot defenders. Pass off, eyes in the backfield. Overplaying the run for Florida. Now you can imagine if Florida were more of an RPO team, they freeze. If Florida were more of an RPO team, they could fake this handoff right here. Emery could then stand tall in the pocket. And then you could be delivering slant routes, dig routes, etc. because you have that availability. Take a look there. These are available. Florida does not do this. Of course, Dan Mullen's well aware of RPOs. He can use them very successfully. He clearly does not trust Emory to do anything like that. And Kentucky was betting all day long that Florida wouldn't do it. If Florida had, they would have had a whole bunch of easy completions. Instead, Kentucky was selling out for the run. All eyes in the backfield and even creating nice, nice gap control, different looks for the Florida offensive line to have to face that keyed against Florida's most likely play calls. So all of that to say, that's how you stop second and one against a Florida team with a good offensive line. Third and 11 for Florida now. A lot of teams would sit back and not worry about Florida running the ball, but Kentucky is going to make sure that they don't allow Emory or a zone read to beat them for anything. In fact, they're going to play quite aggressively against the run. 
Look at the nickel. He's still going to have his eyes in the backfield. Safety. Eyes in the backfield. Eyes in the backfield. Eyes in the backfield. Eyes in the backfield. Here we don't. Here we're going to pay attention. Here, eyes in the backfield. Right? So we got our boundary corner here on the near side. The most likely throw Emery might go to. Paying attention to the receiver. Everyone else is watching the run. On top of that, Kentucky's going to have a nice, nice action here. Here's Pascal. He's going to he's going to come inside of Ethan White. Ethan White's going to let that go. Florida's going to blow their protection here on the offensive line. He is going to come out to block this level on purpose, passing this off. Uh, this is not quick. Sorry, that's Braun, not Ethan White. Braun's going to let this go. I can't tell you exactly who's responsible in this protection for that, but it's wrong. Again, Florida knows right now they should be IDing who has who, who they're going to double, who they're going to chip and release. They get it wrong. They allow them to come right through the formation and make that tackle. So Kentucky not willing just to sit with three and sit back here and keep everything behind, mixing up how they played defense when Florida was down behind the sticks here, third and 11, and staying aggressive on the rushing lanes, knowing Florida didn't want to pass. And there's a nice example of it there where third and 11 becomes third and 15, fourth and 15, not third and 15, fourth and 15. And yeah, every reason to celebrate there if you're Josh Pascal, because again, you had a huge day against Florida. Second and seven, Anthony Richardson now gets his second taste of football action here for Florida. Of course, he's already run a play on first down. I'm going to show you the first pass of the game for him. Very simple. Florida loves this action from the running back. This is going to be Pierce. He's going to come right down the line. The reason this works, again, eyes in the backfield, eyes in the backfield, eyes in the backfield. Florida here, if they can get a block, they're two on two. The free defender is here. If Pierce can win this foot race, then Florida's going to be in business here for a nice game. There's Richardson. This ball should be placed further out here. We'll grab about it because we're looking for the perfect pass. You can see that Pierce has to kind of stop his momentum and bend down. Better throw is going to lead him further out here. The more you lead your running back out here, the better his angle is on the free defender coming to get him. These details are important for Florida's quarterbacks. It's one of the things that Trask did so well to maximize plays. Now Whittemore is going to get a nice block there. And you're going to have Copeland up top getting a nice block there. And that is going to allow Pierce to catch an easy flat pass and take it for a first down. So nice play design from Florida there and the conversion. First and 10 for Florida. Anthony Richardson still in the game. Florida going to employ a stack formation on both sides. This really forces Kentucky to play two defenders here, two defenders here. They keep a single high safety. Why do they keep a single high safety? Because they are concerned that Anthony Richardson will put a deep ball out there as he's done on film. This gives Florida numbers. If Kentucky wants to bring their safety in the box here, then they can equal the numbers, but they're not doing that, which of course most teams wouldn't. So that allows Kentucky to have six versus Florida's five, six, and then Richardson being seven. This is an advantage for Florida in the zone read game. In this case, Anthony Richardson after Florida gets away with a false start, not surprising, is going to take the snap and make the correct read here. He does not have the ability to keep this. He has to read this edge defender. The edge defender has set the edge on him. This should be an interior handoff. Florida now is going to be going essentially 5v3. This is your unblocked man. It's 5v3. And unfortunately for Florida, we are going to miss. We're going to miss right here in the gate. There it is. There's DeLance. That's a whiff. One more time, that's a whiff, and now we're dead. Unfortunately for DeLance, it wasn't just him, or perhaps fortunately for DeLance, as we're going to see Kingsley at center here get pushed off the ball inside as well. And if you don't maintain your gap control, it doesn't matter even if you have the numbers. So if this play works correctly for Florida, DeLance seals his block here. That allows Ethan White to seal his block here. Kingsley seals his block there. And then we're in some business, but as it stands, we've got nothing. Kentucky, total gap control here, nowhere to go, despite the fact that Florida had a numbers advantage on this play. Second and 11 for Florida. Kentucky again with three down linemen. This time when Anthony Richardson is spreading the ball out, three receivers up top. You've got your fourth down here, plus a running back, five eligibles right there. Kentucky on second and 11 is respecting the passing game of Florida a bit more. You can see with the linebackers playing here and the depth they have on the 3x3. With Emory, you often saw the 3x3 three three defenders right here. They're backed up with Richardson. This is going to create space for this very play we're going to see. This is what happens when you've at least put on film that you can hit shots over the top. It changes how teams defend you. 
And because of this, Richardson's going to get a favorable look. Favorable look, Florida with five down linemen versus three right here. This is a predicated quarterback run all the way. We've seen them do this before. Let the ends get up the field on purpose. Give them a little shove on contact to go past. Richardson then is going to climb the pocket. Four-man rush as they brought an extra linebacker. Four-man rush right here. And now we're in business. Set the block here and let Richardson do what he wants. He comes through. Nice tackle, of course, at the end of this play right here. Uh, but a nice gain from Florida on second 11. A free gain, an easy gain. All set up by the fact that Kentucky a little bit further off the football when Richardson is in the game because he has put on film that he will challenge you vertically. Florida throws far more vertical passes with him in the game, and that allows more space for Richardson to be successful on that quarterback draw. Third down and four for Florida. As we've seen with Richardson, he rarely gets to finish his actual drives. If it's third down and something, they take him out. If he loses his helmet, of course, they don't bring him back in. That's the case here. It's third down and four on this drive. He's driven Florida down the field despite them having stalled several times before. And on this particular play, Florida's going to be five wide. Top of your screen, you can't see it, but we've got a receiver here. You have Naquan Wright, Whittemore, uh, Shorter, and Zipper. Kentucky's going to counter by playing a cover zero. No safety. No one's off the ball here. Watch the rotation down. There is no safety. We are instead going to play by far the most likely routes that Florida likes to run. So you're going to play a rat here in the middle. He's going to try to take away any kind of quick slant route, any dig route Florida likes to run. And on this side, Kentucky's going to play four on three. I'm going to play four on three. They do have someone on top of this one. He's going to slide on top, but he's really not playing safety. So it's not a cover zero man on the bottom of your screen. Here we have zone. Up top we have man. So we're getting a combo coverage here. We get zone and man. We're going to bracket down beneath. And then up top, we're going to have man. So right now, pre-snap, the right read for Emery is to go to the top of the screen. He's got a go route off the top. And then he's going to have a slant route here, a little bit deeper, from Naquan. This is the route you want. Kentucky is baiting this slant route. This is exactly where the robber's going. He knows pre-snap. Emery most likely wants to run some sort of route here, given how they displayed coverage. He's going to go right into that window. He's going to sit right in it, as you can see him right now. He's sitting in this window. Emery's going to go right to it. Again, he's looking over here for no real reason. He doesn't plan on going there. He plans on going here the whole time. Sees his throw. Doesn't really like it. And the reason he doesn't like it is because it was taken away. One more time. Watch Emery's eyes. He's going to go right to it. Okay. Oh, I don't like that. That's good. He shouldn't throw it there, by the way. That definitely would have been a pick. He should not have thrown the ball there. Waits a long time. By waiting just long enough, he frees the underneath defender gives himself a small window, sneaks it by the diving hand here, and completes a first down to Naquan Wright, who makes an excellent, excellent catch. The much easier option on this play would have been Zipperer. Shorter ran an in route here. Zipperer ran from his position and actually just ran a little comeback route right here. He had a nice wide throwing lane to hit, uh, but this throw is a, is, a, is a really good conversion on third down and four, given that he did wisely not make this throw. This throw is taken away. Now, with all that being said, Florida has good pass protection. It's a tiny window to fit into. What is this telling you? It's telling you that Kentucky on third down and four is comfortable enough coming out without a deep safety because they're not worried about Florida doing anything up top with their wide receiver where you could run a variety of moves, especially with Florida's offensive line protection, which tends to be good. You could run a post corner, a corner post. You could run a whole bunch of moves here. You could run a stem dig. You could run a lot of really difficult man routes. Florida elects not to do that, instead taking a short, easier throw, which Kentucky bets is going to happen. Kentucky is right, but Florida gets the conversion. So as you're watching this game, you're thinking to yourself, Kentucky is sort of all over what Florida wants to do. They're making it hard for Florida to drive the football. I've talked a lot about how Emory tends to be a pretty good zone read quarterback when it comes to making his reads. Here's an example where he's not going to make the right read. Now, Kentucky's still ready for anything when it comes to run. Eyes in the backfield, eyes in the backfield, eyes in the backfield, eyes in the backfield, right? Everyone's got their eyes in the backfield except for, again, the boundary corner. Pretty typical. So what happens here is Florida is going to pull their sure pull from Ethan White, which he frequently does. And Emory has two defenders, as we talked about. They like to stack here. Right? They're going to have two defenders here to the Emory side on this particular play. They'll alternate that sometimes to the running back side, sometimes to the Emory side. Either way, they're going to come from the weak side with two defenders. 
Emery should not keep this ball. He should definitely hand this ball off. He makes the wrong decision. If he makes the right decision and hands this ball off, Florida's in for a nice play as Ethan White's going to come around. There's only one person here who can make this block. And now, due to Florida's action, you're going to get Naquan right one-on-one in space against the safety. That's what the play is designed to do. Unfortunately, Emery keeps this. And Kentucky's got two defenders here. And they make the stop. Emery still squeezes out a little gain here. But a rare example where Emery kept it and he shouldn't have. Not too often that happens. I show you this play one more time. Take a look. Commit it to memory. Just watch this. Watch this area. Watch it closely. Just take a look. Watch it first and 10. Watch it in here. Okay, that's the play. Okay, great. All right. Keep that in mind. We're keeping that in mind because now it's second down and nine, the very next play, and Florida lines up in basically the same exact formation because they're running the same play. But Kentucky, Kentucky's wise to this. The safety is now no longer this far off. He's creeping up. In fact, he's letting you know, I think I know what you want to do, and I'm not going to let it happen this time. In fact, I'm kind of baiting you into it. And then there it is. Ethan White comes around. There's the fake. This time he doesn't keep it. The same exact defense is deployed by Kentucky. Except, oh, well, there's Josh Pascal winning at the point of attack. And he is going to take on, in this case, a mismatch for him. He's taking on Zipperer. This is a tough assignment. Look, you're a tight end. You're blocking the best defensive lineman on Kentucky, which may or may not mean something normally. But this dude is a beast an all sec caliber kind of player he's going to hold his own here with zipper and he's going to wait until he decides he wants to get off the block which is right there take naquan out at the same point in time the safety comes down takes away the edge sets the edge here which is exactly what he should do make sure that naquan does not get outside of him he sets the edge pascal makes the tackle excellent stop so florida looks they thought they had something on the previous play they go right back to it kentucky adjusts very quickly taking away what florida thought they may have had on the very next play Third and 10 now for Florida. And what do we see here but another highlight real play from Josh Pascal, who's wreaking havoc. We also see Trent Whittemore here for a touchdown. However, let's look at what happens first. Third and 10, a, a, a difficult down and distance for Florida. Here is number four, the menace himself. He's just going to have a power penetration rush here on Ethan White, who's been a very good lineman for Florida. And he is going to penetrate right past Ethan Wright, right to where Florida is setting the pocket for Emery. Emery's rolling the pocket. His mark is actually to get to right here. And unfortunately, Josh Pascal seemingly knows the play. No idea. He knows where he's going because he goes there right away, <laughs> sniffs it out, beats Ethan White. Emery now rolling. Probably some holding here, by the way. Take a look at that. Probably a little holding. No worries. Emery's going to take off, run, and not quite get there. Now, what's important to note here. Is Emery setting up here? Again, he's never bringing his eyes across the field, but if he does, here's Trent Whittemore. There is no safety here on the high side. The entire middle of the field is wide open, and there you go. He's going to pass him off to nobody. If Emery's eyes are upfield and he checks this deep third gap, he would have tons of space to throw the ball here to Whittemore. But again, he's a runner. He's really, like I mentioned, he's more of a running back playing quarterback. He's not a quarterback escaping the pocket thinking maybe there's a big play available. He's thinking, I'm going to run. I'm a runner. That's what I want to do. And I don't see anyone's jersey or face mask facing me that I can throw the ball right to. And I'm not comfortable putting it here into grass to throw someone open. So I'm going to take off. And since Kentucky keeps playing zone defense with all of their eyes on Emory, they're able to make the stop there before Florida gets that first down. 10-7 Florida. It's been an ugly first half. There's a minute and 56 seconds left, and you have three timeouts. What are you thinking that we should do? Florida's on their own 12-yard line here. Three timeouts, plenty of time left. If you trust your quarterback, Emory Jones here, and you're Dan Mullen, you're going to try to go score points. You're playing Kentucky. You need points. You're on the road. Trust your quarterback. Run your plays. Do what you do. Florida's going to come out on first down, and we're going to throw a screen pass. A typical opener. See what we can get here. Florida's going to pick up not a whole lot. Why? Because Kentucky's ready for this stuff. Again, football by alignment. Talk about this a lot. Linebacker play. He's not in here. He's out here. He's outside the tackle. He's splitting the difference between Whittemore and Emory. That's exactly where you should be, and that allows him then to flow and become the inside defender. Florida then is going to incorrectly block this play as they're both going to block. You see, get the assignment wrong. They're both going to block the same player. That's not going to work. 
Whittemore and or Gamble. Someone needs to be blocking here. And then this is a one-on-one -on -one here on the inside. Uh, unfortunately, that's not happening. So he gets there even faster than Kentucky would have gotten there. And that play goes for nothing. But all right, no problem. That was first down. We have three timeouts and a whole bunch of time available. What are we going to do on second down? All right, second down and eight. We've let 30 seconds run off the clock. We're not in a hurry. Perhaps we have a great play call drawn up, and we're confident we're going to drive 80 yards and score a touchdown. We're going to come out here, and we're going to throw a hitch route to Whittemore. Okay, we like hitch routes. We're fine with that. Look, there's a hitch route. Completion. Nice. We've got a first down. Moving the sticks. Still got a minute and 18 seconds left. We've got plenty of time. This is a nice ball by Emery, by the way. He sets up. Wants to throw the hitch the whole way. Looks at the rush. Not ideal. Look at Emery's eyes here. He's going to look at the rush. He kind of loses himself a little bit. Gets the pad off. Throws it. But again, Florida's offensive line struggled to pass protect in this game. Struggled to pass protect. You're going to get a penetrator here coming across. You're going to get a looper here. There's your penetrator. Looper gets handled pretty nicely by Ethan White. Unfortunately, Garage cannot handle the penetrator. Why can you not handle the penetrator? If you guess it's number four, Josh Pascal, you are correct. That's why one really good defensive lineman can really mess things up for your team. These guys are all taken care of. Number four, he's rarely ever taken care of. At any rate, Florida takes the check down there to Whittemore and gets a first down and sets themselves up in business. Now for a fun fact of the All-22. I typically don't do this. I tell you what's happening in every play. But on television, what you saw is what we just showed. You saw Whittemore catching the football. There he is. Now again, because Pascal blows this up, there's no chance for this. But here in the slot, Florida has potentially a touchdown. There's Copeland. There's a pass off. There is a single high safety in the middle of the field and a dropping corner here and what's a cover three alignment. But this is a seam go route. Seam go route. There is a confident, comfortable window here for a quarterback to stick this ball into this seam go route, and this would be a touchdown to Copeland. So Florida did run vertical routes in this football game, and in fact, they were frequently wide open, but this is not to blame Emory here. Doesn't matter who you are. You're not getting the seam ball off because right now is when you would see it and you'd want to let the ball go. Maybe right here, the ball's going to come out of your hand. He is looking in this direction. Is he looking at Copeland? I doubt it. I think he wants Woodenmore the whole time because he can see his chest. But it doesn't even matter because if you wanted to hit Copeland on that seam go route, there's no chance you're hitting it unless you can drive down through this ball with your momentum. Drive through, drive through. That's not going to happen when Pascal's in your face. He has to take the check down. So I say all this to say, if you can see the all 22, he goes right here. He's open. That play's available. Not available because... Jazz Pascal is an absolute monster who wrecked Florida's game plan pretty consistently. And again, Florida's game plan, probably not the right word, who just wrecked Florida's offensive line pretty consistently uh, during this game. But Florida did have receivers running open deep. Again, you can't always see that on your TV feed, but he was open on this particular play. Not Emory Jones's fault. He had no real shot to hit them there. Uh, the offensive line did not protect well enough. And again, most likely that's where Emory was going anyway. All right, so after that first down, let's giddy up and go and score some points. Clock's running down here. Play clock's down to four seconds. Hmm, it's odd. We're not really in a hurry to score points. It's only 10 to 7. Maybe we've got something great here. Ooh, little inside run. Okay, okay. You know what, though? We pick up, we pick up eight more yards here. You know what? Fine. That's great. Let's get going. We still have 49 seconds left. Our field goal kicker's already made a 51-yarder. We're in good shape. Let's... Let's get on our horse and make some plays. We've got this. We're capable of doing this. We can do what we need to do to get down here and score. So let's let's make some magic happen. Okay, second and three. It's odd the clock continues to tick. We've already burnt 20 seconds here. We still have three timeouts left. Hmm. Certainly seems like we're going to just run the clock out, but I really don't want to run the clock out. I want to be aggressive. I had two minutes there is a thing called a two-minute drill. I know I've heard of that before. Okay, we ran for a first down. No urgency here. We're just going to let the first half go. So, of course, I'm presenting this in rather dramatic fashion. There is no good answer to this, except for the fact that you don't trust your quarterback. 
If you're a coach and you have one minute and 56 seconds left, for those of you who have done coaching before, of course, you know the feeling. If you don't trust your quarterback and you don't feel like you're capable of passing the football down the field in a two-minute offense and the risk is too great of throwing an interception or doing something silly, you're going to play it safe. And a floor mentality does not win championships. You have to have a ceiling mentality. So if your chosen quarterback is not someone you trust enough to run a two-minute drill on the road against Kentucky when you have superior athletes to what Kentucky has, and Kentucky's weakness is their secondary, hmm, good questions should be asked about this situation. A minute and 56 seconds left, all three timeouts, and you choose to run the clock out. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Not, in my opinion, a championship caliber mentality. Florida still up 10-7. We're now in the third quarter. Florida's defense gets a stop. It's first down and 10. And Florida's going to get a look that they like. Again, Kentucky comfortable letting Florida pass. We're going to start off here the ball. First and 10. Kentucky playing it safe. Of course, playing the run. Consistently playing the run. Everyone's eyes are in the backfield. As we backpedal, eyes are in the backfield. Backfield, backfield. All 11 players, eyes in the backfield. Let's just take a simple hitch. And that's good. This is good offense. This is nice. It's a well-timed hitch route. He puts it right on his chest. Shorter is able to turn and gain the first down. Good ball. Good throw again. Emery, of course, we're, we're talking a lot about it on this broadcast here, but Emery's solid at throwing the hitch route. He likes to throw the hitch. He likes to throw on the run. These are all the things Emery likes. Give your quarterback some confidence. Throw on the run. Throw to the right. Throw it to Shorter. Big body target. Throw it on time. Comfortable first down for Florida. It's something, again, Dan Mullen has to do, as we said before, a lot on this broadcast to make Florida successful. This has already been a very long offensive broadcast. I apologize for going into detail on some of the things that we've seen on film. But in a lot of ways, this was a culmination of so many things that I think Florida's decision-making personnel-wise, mentality-wise, um, floor versus ceiling kind of strategic and tactical thoughts culminated to. So I'm explaining myself perhaps a bit more on this film review uh, if you like it or don't like it, of course, just let me know. I tend to want to keep these things shorter, and sometimes I go longer. As I said earlier, hey, I'm just going to wind up doing faster plays. I think I've been longer. So again, my apologies for saying I'm going to speed it up. And here I am going on and on about all these various things uh, that went on this game. But it was really interesting, of course, from a, a schematic standpoint, a tactical standpoint, a play calling standpoint, and a personnel standpoint. The first and 10 for Florida. Florida's going to get exactly what they want against cover three. Copeland is going to run a hitch route. We're going to get a little flat route here from Malik Davis, and that is going to keep the corner down playing the flat. Safety's going to be on top, giving up the hitch by design to Copeland. And Emory Jones is going to hit this just as he wants. Knows exactly where he's going. Looks at the safety. Of course, the, the middle safety is never going to take away this anyway. All that would matter here is the player you see coming into your screen, which is the cover three dropper. There's your safety up top. Here's your underneath defenders bracketing uh, gamble. And then there's your comeback throw to Copeland, who has to dive to get it. So this ball, not exactly perfect. All right, he's coming back to come get this ball. Way to attack the ball, though. Nice work by Copeland, a guy we've talked about in the past who struggled to catch passes this season. He's been incredibly consistent. So great job, Copeland. Let's give you some love right here. Your hands have been very solid this year. It's noted you're putting it on film. And a nice catch here. He's snapping his head around. He's ready for a ball he can catch in his mindset, and hopefully he can make a move here or here and turn this into more. We've seen Emery throw those hitches better, but this hitch is a deeper one. This is about a 20-yard throw from where Emery is sitting. This ball's not as accurate. It's not on him where you want it. And again, this makes sense. This is a distance Emery struggles to throw the ball to in general. A hitch route's the most comfortable throw to make 20 yards down the field. This one's still out in front of him, still low. Copeland does the wise thing and just secures the catch rather than trying to wait for the ball to come to him. And Florida converts the first down. So here's what's interesting about Florida and Emory Jones. If you look at these numbers, you think, wow, 12 of 13, 126 yards and a touchdown, no turnovers. This is a pretty good day. It's the third quarter. There's 12 or three left. Perhaps we've had a slow start. Perhaps we've been driving and not being able to get it. But so much of this, as we talk about, is how Florida's having to do this, the limited ability with which they have to be able to attack all areas of the field and how that affects you in games like this one, where essentially your margin for error gets just whittled down. It gets whittled down and down and down and down and down. So as opposed to playing ceiling ball, where you're trying to create the widest margin of error you possibly can, 
you start playing in a lane that looks like this. If everything goes well and I, I craft all the right passes, my range and variance is right in here, but I can never get up here. And that means I'm gonna play closer games than I otherwise would. And that was the story of the game for Florida in this one. And let's play here on first and 10 for Emery. We're gonna take a shot downfield. Again, this turns into a hitch route. There's the hitch route, and that's gonna be pass interference. Nice job by Copeland coming back to the football. He's on top of the route, he's trying to play it. He gets a whole lot of Copeland's jersey on this. And if you're Florida, this is where you want the ball to go. One more time, take a look here. Florida's tight ends could have had a huge, huge day in this game. They were frequently open as they are here, running right down the middle of the field. Again, this ball is here, it's open. And what else do we notice? I love saving some of these. It's like a little nugget for you guys. Perhaps you're watching and you're screaming at your screen. You're saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe he could have hit this guy. Obviously, Copeland gets the conversion on the pass interference, but he was getting pressure, and you're right. He was right here, and let's see who happened. If you guessed who caused the pressure, there it is. There's a looper. This is what's tricky, right? So you get a penetrator, penetrator, and a looper. Now, if you want to do this perfectly, and I have to guess, look, most teams are going to handle this this way. Some teams may do this differently. I cannot say for sure how Florida wants to handle it on this particular play, but typically you get penetration here. You're going to try to jam the penetrator to the outside. The looper then gets picked up by the guard, Reese. DeLance picks up the penetrator. That's what you'd like to have happen. What happens here instead is DeLance is going to get shoved off the ball and turned around here. And now he becomes sort of a de facto looper because he's turned his back. There goes your penetrator pushed off. And now it's a free run at the quarterback. So regardless of what's happening, one thing you never want to see is this. If your back is turned around, you're in trouble as an offensive lineman. That allows pressure up the middle here. And this is nice that Florida converts this. So again, on every single one of these film reviews, of course, I'm always going to nitpick what could be done, what should be done. Are we reading the field? I did the same exact thing with Trask. It's just what you do when evaluating quarterbacks. Your quarterbacks can see this is where you have all the grass. You want to be completing passes to big swatches of grass rather than relying on a pass interference call. When the safety is close by, you have sideline right here, and you're hoping for this kind of 50-50 ball at best. Either way, Florida gets another first down here, coming out strong in the second half, trying to push their lead out. First and 10 for Florida. We're driving. Things look like they're going well. This year's Florida team drastically different, obviously, from last year's Florida team. Florida's running a lot of very simple plays to run as a quarterback. Here's an example of one. Again, coming out in the stack formation, really because they're just forcing Kentucky to have to guard these two guys. Do they have any intention of actually throwing it to them? So far, not really. In fact, if they did, they'd almost always throw this little bubble screen right here. Uh, either way, Kentucky has to honor them. Now, Kentucky's honoring them as little as they possibly can. They're going to take inside leverage. They're going to keep their eyes in the backfield. They're going to play run defense as best as they can because they really don't buy it. They want to keep as many uh, players as they possibly can within five or six yards of the line of scrimmage. On first down here, Florida's going to elect to run the zone read and hand the ball off. Eyes in the backfield. Immediately, Kentucky's going to come fill these gaps, and Emory would have had it. He kept it a one-on-one -on -one here which looks to be pretty promising. Hmm, maybe you should have kept that one. Eli Malik Davis is going to turn this into a five-yard gain where a host of Kentucky defenders will put him down. It's now second and five, and thanks to this super tight camera angle, you can't see that Florida's doing the same thing at the bottom of the screen up top up here. Same exact formation, same exact play, same exact look all the way across the board. Kentucky is actually suspecting perhaps a pass on this play. They're backed off a little bit further here now. They don't have as many people close to the line of scrimmage as we saw before. They're thinking Florida's up to something when in reality, Florida feels like, hey, we have numbers, which Florida does. And now we're going to pull the old running back block trick. And that means Emery, last time he had one-on-one -on -one out here, if we can get the one-on-one -on -one again, then Emery should have a big game. And there is the play design. Unfortunately, a hero play occurs, this time not from Pascal, but this is largely a good feel from Kentucky. This is the nose tackle, and take a look at him and the play that he makes here. It's a fantastic play. It's also a good idea that Kentucky knows what Florida wants to do on this play. 
This is reading the mail of your opposing coach. Nose tackle is going to purposely slide all the way out here to set the edge, which will then allow the linebacker to come in and make a tackle. Essentially, if he can successfully do this, it blows up a play that Florida looks like it has. Here it comes, gets to the edge, garage is there. He seals the edge single-handedly by himself with a hero effort, despite a nice block here from Malik Davis and what would have been a hole. There's nothing. Emery has to cut back. He can't get the edge, which is what Florida's trying to get, where it could have been a big play. Turns it back inside, and Kentucky makes the stop. So it's a really, really nice play from a nose tackle. Very athletic, also showing a great understanding of what Florida wants to do. Florida found themselves in this down and distance a lot, whether it was due to false starts or just plays on first and second down. This is not the down and distance the Florida team wants to be in. And this is excellent defense from Kentucky. We get a motion from Malik Davis. Here comes the safety down in coverage. This is how you're going to handle this. If you want to play sound technique football, I will let it unravel for you so you can see. First, we're going to keep a nice buffer here so I don't get picked. I, being in this case the safety, I don't get picked. From whatever happens here, we get an outside release where this is going to be shepherded to the outside. There it is. Off your screen, what you can't see happening is the safety is still on top. Kentucky's here. Florida's here. He's running up the sideline. He's pushing him, and he's staying on top of this, basically keeping his eyes on Emory Jones, allowing himself to have downhill leverage in case a slant route is run. That's what he's looking for. That's what he's sitting on. Kentucky, as you can see, the top of your screen is basically sitting at the sticks, betting that Florida is going to run most of their routes out the sticks, at the sticks. Here's to Lance at the bottom. In pass protection, again, he's now on the ground. Is that good? I don't know. You tell me if that's good. Emory's about to get hit. There he goes. He's shed. He gets the ball off in time. But this play has no shot. It's third and eight. This is about a four-yard pass, and that's what you want to see from your defenders. You'll give them that throw. Even if he makes the catch, he's not going to get it. Instead, there's contact right when the ball gets there. He finishes the play. Perfect technique, perfect defense. Another example of Kentucky knowing what Florida wants to do most. What is their first read most likely going to be in these third down plays? Let's take that away. After the Trevez pick, Florida's in business here on Kentucky's side of the field. It's second down and seven. Anthony Richardson back in the game already had a play here of a gain of three on first down. And now Florida's going to try to run Richardson to the right. Again, employing the extra blocker with a running back. These plays can work. Let's start from the top and count how many linemen we have. Two, four, six, right? Seven, eight. Kentucky countering with three, four, five, six, and seven. So Florida's plus one. Plus one, safety is going to be the eighth. You have to like running with a plus one advantage. This is something Florida has been really successful with all year long. They've been very successful running when they have the numerical advantage. And in this particular situation, not going to work out. Despite the advantage plus employing the extra blocker. So essentially, essentially Anthony Richardson is the extra man. This is where you're losing right here. Look at the push. It's going to push all the way back into Richardson. He's not able to hit that hole with any speed. Then Pascal is going to set the edge out here. And that's excellent gap discipline by Kentucky. So one more time. If you're Florida and you struggle to pass the football, and Kentucky's also able to essentially say, we're going to play you with 2, 4, 6, 7, versus your 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, and give you Anthony Richardson, one of the most dynamic runners at quarterback in college football, to be your extra man and we're still going to stop you it's going to be a long and difficult day at the office that's precisely what happens here the safety does not come in and make this play here's your safety this is kentucky just winning at the line of scrimmage winning at the point of attack pushing florida back we have not seen this happen yet and that significantly impacted florida's ability to have successful run plays Third and eight, we get Anthony Richardson's second pass attempt in the game. Here's the rush yard stat. Take a look. Florida again at 94 in the third quarter with 8.09 left. So Kentucky doing an excellent job on Florida. Florida possessing the ball for a lot of time, but not being productive with points per play. Offsides call is going to happen here with a nickel blitz. There it is. Nickel blitz. Teams like to bring nickel blitzes. Obviously, we've seen this before, especially against athletic quarterbacks like Richardson. 
Richardson that is going to do everything right here. He's going to want to throw to where the pressure comes from. That's correct. That's what you want to do. Throw to where the pressure comes from. That is the best place to throw. The most space is there. The routes he has, he's got a little out route here, and then he's got a little hitch route here. Now, he is going to be uncomfortable with his mechanics on this one. He knows the blitz is coming. He snaps it as he's crossing the line of scrimmage. I believe this hurries him up. He's going to have a little breakdown in technique. Watch him here as he takes his drop. He's now ready to throw, but this ball is not ready to be thrown yet, which he knows. And now watch him. He's patting, patting, double pat, right? Pat, 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 not what you want. Ball comes out, doesn't drive down it. Not a good throw. He bounces it here. But when you're watching quarterbacks, what you want to see is their ability to make a read to where they're throwing the football. We'll break several things down here. So one, drop back is nice. Everything looks good. Back foot hits the ground. He's a little early. He's a little early because I think he's feeling rushed right here. He knows he has a free play. A little early. He's rushed. Pat, 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 pat. He's holding this defender by looking here. We've seen him do this a lot. He does a nice job, especially for really, you know, a red shirt freshman, a guy who's who's barely played, especially at the quarterback spot here in college. He does a nice job moving guys with his eyes. He's going to create this throw lane here, which is what he wants to do. He's wanting him to commit to this out route so he can throw the hitch route here to the window. This is nice. Everything about this is nice, but the execution of the throw. This is going to be a nice throw into this window here for a nice completion on third and eight. Rather than throwing this route and not getting the first down, he's going to complete this for a first down. I like everything about this play. Pressure comes from here. You want to throw to this side. You know you have to go more quickly because you have this pressure coming in. You're making your read. You're reading this defender. Everything about this is good, 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 but the throw. So there's things on film you're looking for. Uh, you're not trying to be an individual player's apologist. Again, if you watch him play quarterback for a full game and he's bouncing half of his throws and you say, look, he's reading the field well, but he's not executing. But if he's getting very limited snaps, very limited throws, but his reading ability is displaying, he understands that if he can get him to commit, he has this throw. That's one of the reasons why people like myself think that Richardson has a bright future as a quarterback, not just an athlete. As a quarterback, not just an athlete. A lot of things went correct here for him with regards to pre-snap read, post-snap read, blitzing, throwing towards the blitzer, reading the underneath defender, making him commit here to create the throw window. A lot of good stuff there. Unfortunately, incomplete pass. Fortunately, offsides Kentucky. Florida now on the 35-yard line. It's third and 13. It's 10-7. The reason why it's third and 13, we just saw the last play was third and eight, then it was third and three, is Florida, of course, has false started twice in a row. Richardson now out of the game, not getting to finish his drive yet again. Uh, as is the typical case in this situation. So he's going to wind up just going back to the bench. Emery comes in on third and 13. Look, this is a tough spot when Kyle Trask had to do it. It's even harder when Emery comes in. He's not a thrower anyway. But don't worry about that because Florida's not actually going to throw. We're going to run the quarterback draw here on third and 13, perhaps trying to get a little closer for a field goal. Again, pretty conservative. It's 10 to 7. We don't feel comfortable throwing the ball against Kentucky on third and 13 or even trying. We're frequently running these quarterback sneaks. Kentucky is ready for this. One, Pascal's ready to be a monster and shove off the block whenever he feels like it. Again, if you want to see what it looks like to be a very talented player in the SEC, watch how they control how they're being blocked. He's just waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's shoving off both of these. Okay, now's my time. I'm going to make this tackle. But even if he doesn't make that tackle on third and 13, we've got an unblocked safety here. We've got rallying help defenders here. This play is never going to go anywhere. Kentucky's ready for Florida to run the football, as will every other sound football team Florida plays the rest of this season. Now, what is the play of the game on fourth down and 10? Florida's going to kick a field goal. Jace Christman, of course, had made from 51, missed from 48. And who do we see? What number is this? Who is that? Number four. Again, I should probably just rename this film breakdown the Josh Paschal Love Fest show because the guy absolutely dominated Florida. It was basically him versus us, and he won. Here he's blocking a field goal. What else can this guy possibly do? He obliterates the left side of Florida's line. That's Big Dez, who he just goes right past. Again, Big Dez is a young guy. He's a huge dude, but Paschal is a smart guy. He's a quick guy. He's a strong guy. He squeezes right in there, and they really get two guys through the pressure point there. He blocks the field goal. It goes right where you'd want it to go if you're a Kentucky fan. 
And then Florida unable to make this tackle. And this really was what you could imagine decided the football game. I mean, Florida's defense was playing well in this football game. Kentucky's offense not very good, struggling to score. This gave Kentucky belief. It took a pick and a turnover where Florida could have scored a touchdown to take a lead and turns it into the worst possible situation because, again, number four, Josh Pascal is an absolute menace. A crucial third down and three for Florida. Kentucky's going to play cover one man with a robber in the middle of the field, one single high safety. And Emory's going to decide that his matchup is to want to throw a slant route here to Whittemore, throwing the ball to his right side, which is more his more comfortable side. There's your slant route. There's the ball. Ball's thrown a little bit far ahead, but it's actually good to lead him there just a little bit too much. This is great coverage by Kentucky. There's really not a lot here for Florida to take. And again, this just comes from Florida having to run very simple routes for Emory. Uh, you're in man here. You'd love to see a rub. You'd love to see a motion in this situation, perhaps sit in a stack, uh, allow yourself to have some help on these routes. I mean, all we're doing here is running a slant route and hoping we're winning. Not super high percentage, especially given that Kentucky's pressed up here in the face of Whittemore. Uh, this call is going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Of course, the top of your screen, Florida doesn't stick with this, but you're going to see a tight end here again come free on this one-on-one -on -one matchup. There he is. He's free. Single high safety is going to come into your screen right there. And there is Kamori Gamble. Again, Florida's tight ends could have had a really big day in this game. Uh, if you're watching this and thinking, well, wait a minute, he came open way late. He did, but this is an instant throw from Emory. Florida picks up this protection, actually pretty nice. He could step up in the pocket here and deliver this pass here and have himself a big play. Instead, he's, he's throwing this slant route no matter what. Again, he's going to take the snap. He's going right to the slant. Trent Whittemore is not one. He is not one on this slant route. This is not a great place to be. The best case scenario is you put it right in his body. He shields him. He holds this, which is what you're hoping for. And again, in that case, you got to recognize how you want to throw it. If you're going for a shield throw, you are no longer going to try to lead him into this space because it's third and three. You're going to try to put it right into his body so he can basically square up towards you, use his body to shield the defender. When you put it out here, you're making this almost impossible. The defender is now going to get a nice strong arm on this throw. So again, premeditated, going there no matter what. Whittemore's got to make a hero catch on that particular play. Not a high percentage conversion. Again, good football is about making your opponent earn every single yard. It's second down and 14 for Florida. We're in the fourth quarter, 13 minutes and change left. And this is the interception. As you're going to see, not me circling this here, but Dan Orvos Orvosky of uh, ESPN here, letting you know that he is going to be running a go route in the seam. We have showed you how open these have been. This is Kamori Gamble. He himself has been very open. It's been a good matchup for Florida. They are in. Take a look here. They're playing a cover three, single eye safety. He's going to stay up top. He's going to stay up top. So cover three. We got three deep. The best way to beat three deep is to send four verticals. Now, we've watched Kyle Trask shred people with this. If you watch the NFL, you watch quarterback shred teams with this. It's the main reason why Nick Saban, of course, has said for many, many years that, you know, a cover three doesn't work against quality quarterbacks who have a strong enough arm to basically hit one of these seams because the safety is not able to cover both of them. Now, you have to have a strong enough arm to do this, and you have to have the protection to do it. So Florida... Gets cover three. We talked about this against Tennessee. This happened against Tennessee. We had cover three. We had a great play on. There's four verticals, four verts right here. There's your four verts. Now, if you're a quarterback, you are only really ever going to hit either this one or this one. Your job is to hit the most likely one. Now, at this stage, if you guess that this is the more likely player to hit, you would be correct. That is, in fact, the better target. He is being trailed more closely. This is a much tighter window. If you're a really, really good quarterback here, and Florida, of course, is going to get some pressure again with the penetration looper, you can see right here, not picked up well, not picked up well right there. That's Tarquin who had to come in for garage, who was out injured for a second. He's going to get beat by the, by the looper. There it is. And that's going to allow pressure into Emery's face. This happened a lot. Look, you have to give credit to where credit's due for Kentucky. That caused some problems, but that's not what caused the problem here for Emery. Emery throws this ball before the pressure even gets to him. He does have a tight window for this ball to be thrown here. 
but Emery likes to throw hitch routes. We've talked about this a lot. Emery wants to throw the ball to people when they're facing him. So rather than put the ball into the grass, where he could have had a completion, this is fine. You can make that work. Instead, he's going to put the ball basically way behind. His receiver's falling, trying to turn around and get to it. Gamble is, and that's going to be an easy pick from the underneath defender, the trail defender, who's trailing this route and making this a tight window in between the safety and himself. And he gets himself a nice interception on a terrible throw. Again, this is the major Achilles heel of Emory Jones. He has a very limited, very limited route tree he's comfortable throwing. And if Kentucky's going to be comfortable running three, uh, three cover three here like this, and Florida's going to know it, and Dan Mullen's going to call four verticals, this is where you want to see Florida gain a big, big play, if not a touchdown. And in the ideal quarterbacking situation here is Emory is going to look at the safety. He's going to move him with his eyes one way or the other, or he can just stare at him. If the safety splits the difference between both of these, he can hit either seam player, and he's going to choose which seam player has a better release. Now, right here... He's going to go here the whole way. That's where he wanted to go. But if you actually stop the video right here, the better throw is definitely this one. Safety's already moving. Let me stop this right here. There it is. Safety is already coming down towards this one. Emery's looking at him. You would know you have cover three post snap. If you know you have cover three post snap, all you're trying to do is get the safety to take one step towards one of these directions. Once he does, you then snap your head over here and you throw a touchdown pass in this seam. Now, again, that's High-level quarterbacking, I'm not expecting Emory or other Florida quarterbacks to always be executing on that level, but that's how the play is designed. Even so, as it is, this ball is available. This ball's got to be thrown into here. He's full speed. He has the trail defender beat. You're going to see where the ball lands, and it's not anywhere near there. Here's where the ball lands. This ball needs to be in this space in between this gap with velocity. Not going to get there. Not going to happen. Interception for Kentucky. Here's a look from Emory Jones's view. Again, there's your penetrator. There's your looper. Looper gets around Tarquin. Emory Jones, as he typically does, finishing off of his back foot here, still leaning back, not driving down the throw. That leads to low velocity. And look at where this ball placement is here. I mean, that's just not going to get it done. This ball needs to be landing over here not here uh, a lot of that has to do just with his mechanics his technique mechanics follow through drive on the ball quickness and making reads these are things that are not going away anytime soon and they're going to show up at big moments like this when florida has to pass the football now 20 to 10 kentucky over florida after they cash in on the interception kentucky's going to stay sound defensively they're not just going to mail it in here and sit back and let florida pick up what they want Florida wants to get Emory some confidence. They're going to give him an easy flat throw. Kentucky's going to play this perfectly. They're going to make sure they get outside leverage here, allowing the underneath, again, an unblocked linebacker to come and make the tackle. There it is. Great flow. Take on the block here on the outside shoulder and then allow your linebacker to come make this play. And if he can't make the play because Pierce is going to try to go up the sideline, which is what happens, then you can make the tackle. That's textbook defense. Great job by Kentucky. We said on the podcast that Mark Stoops each and every year has his linebackers playing very sound football. It shows up with how they attack the gaps and it shows up with how they handle screen plays as well. They were very successful, as I've said multiple times already, in this football game. Second and nine, Florida going to catch Kentucky again in the very same action they had earlier where Copeland's going to run a hitch. They're going to send a route out here into the flat to occupy the corner. He's going to stay low. Uh, safety's going to stay high, giving up, essentially. They're going to give you this hitch route here on the sideline on second and nine. Here it is. And there you go. He's going to stay. Eyes in the backfield. He's going to pick up Pierce, split the difference between the hitch route and Pierce. Emory Jones is a nice job looking at Pierce here, which holds him, which allows him to make this throw. So, again, Emory has shown some progression. Obviously, in this film review, um, you know, we tend to be, I tend to be pretty analytical because you're looking for what you can improve with on film. You're trying to show your quarterbacks and your players, here's what perfection looks like. Will you always hit it? No. But the goal is to get that into your mind so that you can line up with good technique. You can make sure that you're not doing anything to harm yourself based upon where your eyes go or how you line up or what your footwork looks like. You want to take care of the little things that you can control. And if you do that, you can take a relatively simple play like this one and make it a nice, easy completion with a throw you like, which is with a receiver 
in this case, if you're Emery, facing you because that's comfortable. There it is. Right to him in the chest, turns up field. And Florida gets a crucial first down on second and nine, keeping them in the football game. A different second and nine. And again, Florida's success contingent upon if Dan Mullen can catch defenses in comfortable coverages for Emery. Right away, he's going to go to his first read. He's going to have just a quick little out route here. Kentucky playing safe over the top, just playing basically don't get beat defense on the second and nine, or don't get beat deep, rather, defense on the second and nine. And that's a nice ball, and it's a nice route. Understanding Kentucky wants to have their linebacker flow right here into the flat. We're going to make sure we run a quick out route that he's not going to be able to get to and disturb the throw window. And Emory Jones sets his feet quickly on this one. There's a quick drive off the right foot ball comes out on time and it's behind him again this is off his back shoulder ball placement's not perfect he's got to catch it while turning around either way though as far as emory jones goes jones goes that timing is excellent from him back foot it's the ground timing is there ball's complete on second and nine a nice play a nice completion there for emory all right florida driving down 20 2010 crucial drive here first and 10 First down means that Florida, of course, as we know, wants to take a shot, right? Everyone knows that. We know that. So let's make it look like we're going to run with Emory. There it is. Kentucky's not really buying this. Take a look. Their defenders have already bailed almost every play we've seen. Their linebackers sitting close to the line of scrimmage. They're expecting a pass here. Here's the TV angle with what we see. And what really matters is we get pressure. Again, here, Florida, their pass protection just was not great in this game several reasons for that one if you're not able to get the clap of your cadence correct while snapping you're not getting off the ball as quickly as you want to your offensive lines a step slow making sure they don't fall start that's going to mess with your pass protection and then obviously two if you're passing on downs where the team expects you to pass they're going to be accurately again reading your mail and that makes it a lot tougher Thankfully, we get an all-22 look here because on television, you're not sure if anyone's open or if this play works. First of all, this play works really well. Here comes Shorter. Shorter's going to run what looks to be just a quick little block and go, let's call it. Florida does so much running. That's going to block. I'm blocking. I'm blocking. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm running a route. And he's wide open. This is wide open for a big play for Florida. Unfortunately, they don't block it up. This is where Emery is looking. His eyes are looking right here. He's going to come back, and immediately he wants to hit this ball. That's what he's looking at. He gets pressure right here at the wrong time, and then he also has this with tons of space here coming free, but no chance to hit that either. So Florida has two options here. Most importantly, their primary option is the Dan Mullen play. He schemes up the right play at the right time. He has a knack for this. We didn't see this connect at, at all in the Kentucky game, despite the fact we had receivers open, whether it was Emory or it was the offensive line. Um, something always seemed to go wrong. So it's an example of a play design that worked. The play was there, did not execute it up front. Second and 10, we now begin to see signs of Kentucky getting more conservative with this sort of lead. It's obviously a big game for them. They haven't won since the 80s in Kentucky. They want this one very badly. Coaches tend to get pretty conservative here towards the end. They're not playing defense the same way they were before. And this is going to allow Florida to punish them with a comfortable play they want to run here, which is the Emory Jones quarterback draw. So again, football by alignment, it means so much by creating more depth with your linebackers, which they're doing here, by allowing them to sit in a too high shell, so your safeties are, your safeties are much further off the ball. Essentially, Florida has a significant numbers advantage playing six on four football here up front, allowing them to push out with Malik Davis and Kingsley to get to the second level and to Emory to get a large gain here on second down and 10, keeping Florida in the game. Kentucky in the red zone just doesn't think Florida can pass. And in fact, before the snap, they're just giving you man-to-man -man with no help anywhere at all. They're going to play where all of Florida's players are. They're going to do all they can to take away the runs at the edge, have help here, have help here, have help here. We don't think you're ever going to hit this. It's curious on the second and two play that Florida feels the need here to run a fake Emery, take a look. There's no need to make this fake. Why? Because these defenders aren't bailing to help on this one-on-one -on -one matchup with Copeland anyway. In my opinion, Emery should just catch this snap with a zero drop, catch the snap, square the feet, 
and throw a fade route. If you wanna throw a fade route, which is what Florida wants to throw. The unnecessary, I'm gonna run, set up, fade back, jump backwards ball, there's no need for that. You know that you have one-on-one pre-snap. You know there's no safety help here. No one is here. Just catch the ball. Again, zero drop, catch the ball, grab the laces, set the right foot in the ground, drive your throw, give your receiver a chance. There's no need for this. Again, no one's here, no safety, no one helping, no one on this part of the field at all. And Florida misses an opportunity to score a touchdown here on second and two because they got overly creative. No need to do that given the pre-snap look. Third and two, Kentucky, of course, after that play, not worried again. One-on-one coverage down here. Absolutely no help from anyone here. Florida going to bring Whittemore across the formation, having a trail player in man to come mark him. Emory Jones then going to try to run up the middle, largely because of how Kentucky has continually employed quality edge defense. In Kentucky, yet again, there's Josh Paschal. There's number four. We've seen it all day long. It's going to win the battle, get in the gap, and get to Emory first, ruining any chance Florida would have had of running interiorly here, despite the fact that Kentucky does commit two defenders to the edge, allowing Florida, in theory, to have this interior run on third and two. Not going to get there, bringing up a crucial fourth down. Fourth down and two, Florida is going to run the same exact play. They felt like they had what they wanted last time. If they can actually get it blocked up correctly here, and if they can redirect Josh Paschal to have what they need, that's correct. There's Josh Paschal, finally buried, buried there by garage. That allows Emory Jones to get into the hole and get the first down, but Florida false started. There's your flag. There's your false start. Fourth and two becomes fourth and seven. And Florida instead kicks a field goal, which they should do, in my opinion. Anyway, you have to get two scores, making it 2013. First down and 10. Four minutes left. Crunch time here for Florida. Florida's going to have another touchdown at the top of the screen in the seam. Again, Kentucky just giving it to them whenever they want it. There's Kamori Gamble again. Could have had a monster day. Florida's not going to hit this. Instead, Emory knows right where he's going, which if you guessed hitch route, you guessed correct. Now, look, he makes this throw under duress. Kentucky comes with a delayed pressure here. To DeLance's side, he's going to be unblocked. Emory stands in there and throws a nice ball. Again, any completion here is a good one if you're getting hit. There's a nice ball, but it's a hitch route. Again, hitch routes are going to offer you the least amount of yards after catch, even though Copeland gets four or five there. If you look at the top of your screen right here, you can kind of see this. That's Gamble wide open. Nobody's there. Nobody's on this side of him. Nobody's deeper than him. He has a massive place for this ball to be thrown. Could Emery have thrown this with the pressure? Yes. Right here, he's open. You can't see him on your screen, but right here, he's cleared. The linebacker is flat-footed. He's in space. There's a big window here. Uh, But that would have had to have been Emery's pre-snap read. Instead, again, take a look at what you see here. Florida's 3x3. Kentucky's 3x3. The safety is on this side of the field. On Copeland's side, Florida's most dangerous vertical receiver. He's on Copeland's side. All you're looking for of your Emory, if you open up, is you want to see where does this safety go. Is he sliding true middle? Is he able to get to this seam route? Am I able to look at this seam route and then come back to my hitch, which is what you should be doing? Ideally, take the snap, peek the safety, take the snap, peek the safety, peek my release right here. I know I've got a touchdown route there. I don't like it. Come back here. So even with the pressure... If Emery's on his reading game, he has time right there. See the safety. Right now, eyes go here. Read the release. If it's good, set your feet, ball out. If not, eyes then snap here to your hitch route, drive throw. Timing would still be the same on that hitch route. Uh, Obviously, again, we're not there yet with Florida. Uh, With those progressions, we're just not there yet. And we may not be there for quite some time. That's a high level of progression, of course, to make. Uh, As it stands, a big completion for Florida. Of course, you're going to take this every single day. It's first down and 10. You need these kind of completions, especially on the road, to get back into this game. First and 10, Florida driving. Just going to run a simple little hitch, really, on this side. Here's your go route again from the seam. Kentucky continues to play a lot of cover three concepts. In this case, they're playing a cover six. They're down low over here, so they're really playing cover two on this side. Uh, regardless, what matters is this seam route available if you want to hit a tight window. But in reality, and this is the right throw here, 
Florida's just trying to pull this cover three corner off, let him drop off of your screen, and then hit this easy first down and 10 completion. He does have a defender in his window. Nice understanding by Kentucky that this is primarily what they're giving up. Let's make sure we bring some pressure into that throw window. Good design by Kentucky. He's there, his hands are up. He knows it's most likely where Florida wants to go. That forces a bad throw there by Emory. You'd like to have that one back, take that completion, set Florida up in business. Instead, they miss on first down. Second and 10 for Florida. I think this play illustrates maybe more than any other one just how comfortable Emory is throwing hitch routes compared to other routes. He's going to start by looking left. Again, he's not really going left. He wants to throw the hitch route, and he's going to go to it, and there it is. This is a tight little window. He's got a lane right here. He's got to put it right to his face mask and body, and he likes throwing to stationary targets. Here it is. Good pass protection, drive, right foot's there. He still does not finish. This right foot is not finishing. He's not really driving down. At least he's not leaning back on this throw. He does have a forward lean. That allows him to get more velocity on the football. That's a nice pass that beats the safety coming downhill for a first down completion on second and 10. And again, Emery's showing there, I think, more than any other throw he's made that he's most comfortable with the hitch route. That was a relatively tight window. First and goal for Florida. Florida needing a score to tie. They're going to get one-on-one -on -one again at the bottom of the screen. All the rest of Kentucky's defenders right here. They could run whatever route combo they want down here. They have half the field to run it. They are going to elect instead to run a zone read fake here or really a little play action inside. Handoff out to Gamble and Kentucky is waiting on this. Why is Kentucky having such success with this? Well, because, again, everyone's eyes are in the backfield. They're playing tons of zone. Their eyes are all in the backfield, and this is primarily to be able to be aggressive against the run or plays that function like this. Perfect technique by staying outside here of Whittemore. Set the edge, allow your inside defender to make the tackle. Football by alignment. Good defense by sound alignment. Third and goal from the 10. Of course, I've said this a million times already, but Kamori Gamble could have had a huge game. It was a good matchup for him. He's going to run just a skinny post route here with leverage, with body leverage. That's where this ball could have gone and should have gone for a touchdown right here. Now, what is Kentucky doing? Kentucky is playing intelligently. They know that Florida prefers to hit Whittemore. So what are they doing? They're having their safety collapse on Whittemore. And they're basically bracketing him. Hey, if you want to beat us, throw the ball to someone other than Whittemore. We're also not going to let you run. We're going to make sure we keep a linebacker here, keeping an eye on Emery. You're going to have to beat us passing the football. This is a throw you want. This is a nice window that you have. Emery's not pressured right now, but he's going to come out. There he is. He wants to throw the ball on this hitch route. That's where he wants to go. There's the hitch. There it is. He wants the hitch. It's third and goal, keep in mind. Third and goal, we need a touchdown. He wants the hitch. Florida just trying to get to more manageable down and distance. The hitch is not there. Rather than stay in the pocket or climb the pocket or reset here, he escapes towards the side where there's far more traffic. And perhaps he's a savant for doing so because he gets face masked. Instead of being fourth and goal, Florida now gets first and goal. New life. And on first and goal, if it worked earlier in the game, why not try a similar screen pass? Perhaps we should have brought Jaquavian Frazier's back in. Instead, we're going to use Copeland, who's going to make a really nice move. You like this. This is one-on-one. -on -one. Of course, you'll take this. Kentucky is ready for this. Notice line of scrimmage. Line of scrimmage. Here's the five-yard line. He's already going to make contact with him here at about the seven or eight-yard line. But if Copeland can make him miss... Then we're in business. Copeland, of course, does make him miss. And if his cleats don't slip, he's not going to fall here. And he's going to score. He does slip. And that is most unfortunate as Florida is tying the game right there. But instead, they're going to lose yards. And again, for Florida to go from second and goal from the five to second and goal from the nine is brutal. Just not equipped right now to be able to convert those kind of down and distances. Florida now, after a false start, has third and goal. Here's a primary target Florida likes, and he is going to be wide open on a route that Emery likes. Unfortunately, that's not where Emery's going to be looking with his eyes. He's looking at the smash concept here with shorter. 
This is not a throw that Emery's comfortable making on film. In fact, we've highlighted this frequently, so I won't go any further into it now. But that's where he's looking first, and Kentucky's all over that. He's going to drop and take away the corner. There's a, there's a safety over top of this, squeezing it. There's no place to go, which Emery accurately reads, and then takes his check down because that's the only place he can go, gaining just a yard or two. But here's what could have happened. Whittemore here in the middle of the field... Again, take a look at Whittemore. Just watch him here. Whittemore is going to be wide open. Look at him. Snaps his head around. Basically a hitch. Good to go. Now, why is he open? Imagine instead that Emery took the snap and looked at Whittemore. Would he be open? No, he wouldn't. Why? Because this defender would have been flowing this way, taking away that route. The reason that quarterback is the most difficult and most important position to play in all of sports is you have so much influence on the football game. You can make a zone either look really good or really bad. And if you can accurately read pre-snap what a team is in and you are able to move defenders with your eyes, you can start here and you can look this way and you process very quickly. Again, quick processor, you know what your routes are. You're typically not going to wind up reading here, 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 and here. You're typically going to wind up reading maybe three reads. So you might go corner route. You might go bailout route. You might go middle route, right? Your middle route could be your last hurrah in time. Or, of course, you could read that opposite. You could go middle route, corner route, check down route. Either way, the faster you are at processing, the more reads that you can handle. In this particular play, he easily, right now, he already knows he doesn't have the corner route. There's already a defender that you cannot see sitting on top of this corner route. So if he's super quick to process, if he's an NFL starting quarterback, he sees this and immediately snaps to this route, right? He's seen the droppers, he's processed this information and immediately drives this in here. Now, again, this is not a critique of Emory in this case. Very few college quarterbacks would possess the ability to do this. But Trent Whittemore is open on this route. He is the person you want to hit. That is going to be a touchdown, unfortunately, for Florida. Not looking at the right place at the right time. And that sets up fourth and goal. All right, fourth and goal. Game on the line. Well, if Whittemore was open last time, maybe he'll be open again. This time we're going to bring him in motion. We find out that Kentucky is not in man. They're not following him. They're not in man. They're playing zone. They're going to bring four. They're trusting that Emery cannot find the right window. And Emery's going to see that he has an inside pocket here to make this throw. Right now, from Emery's vantage point, there is a lane to make this throw. Unfortunately, because Emery is staring down this throw from the beginning. Watch his eyes. Take the snap. He's not, he's not sticky, right? We talk about kind of sticky eyes in the middle of the field. Don't declare where you're going yet. You don't need to give this away. He immediately puts his head right to where he wants to go. And by doing that, here is your robber defender. He's going to flow with Emery's eyes, and he is going to squeeze this lane and bat this ball down. Now, in reality, it doesn't matter. This pass is not a good enough pass to be completed. You can see Whittemore is turning all the way around because, of course, it's going to be a hitch route. And this ball is actually being thrown somewhere over here. He's turning around and he's having to fall backwards. This pass is way behind him. But, but in a theoretical world where he moves this defender with his eyes this way, he would be able to jam a ball in here with the right velocity and the right timing. That's going to be a really difficult throw. As it stands with this play, the right receiver would have been Kamori Gamble. There's no defender deeper than this one. He's got a whole bunch of grass above him. That's the right throw. If you're looking for the right throw, that's the right one. Gamble's going to put his hand up. You can see it right here. He is open. That is the right throw. This throw here, if he wants to make it, is going to have to be thrown deep into the end zone. That's the only place you have. Uh, Emery, again, just doesn't do that on a film. He's going to throw a hitch route, and that's where that ball is going. Ball's coming really in here. He just is not comfortable throwing the ball to grass, throwing guys open. He's just not what he does, and that's difficult. And that's why, again, I say um, not lightly that he's really more of a running back playing quarterback. That's not to, to be offensive to Emery or to slight him in any way. On all of these film reviews, I do my best not to make it personal about any player I just try to give you the analysis of what you see on film and where the limitations are. And on this particular play, of course, this sealed the fate for Florida on this fourth and goal play. Uh, Kentucky gets a huge win for Florida fans, a very frustrating loss. And you'll see a couple more looks at it here at the end. 
and you're going to see what I'm talking about. His eyes, again, imagine you're playing the robber defender here. His eyes hike. They don't even for a second fool you. He's locked into where he wants to go. Here comes the aforementioned gamble where he has a throw over the linebacker here. Uh, he's not going to get that chance. Of course, pocket kind of collapsing around him a little bit. He can step up to buy himself more time if he needs be. He's going to just take his shot here. And then there is Whittemore. And again, there is a lane. This ball can be thrown here. It's got to be towards the back of the end zone, like we pointed out. Where this ball's thrown, Whittemore having to turn himself around. Ball's going to be over here, even if it's not tipped. Does Whittemore even catch that? It's pretty unlikely, at least somewhat possible. Um, this throw, I think, tough moment, big moment for Emery. Of course, you feel bad for him. He's giving his all for Florida. He's trying his best. I have no doubt he's working super hard. But at some point in time, football's a team game. you got to do its best for the team. You have to try to put someone in that position that is able to make more throws than what Florida is currently making. Otherwise, you're just not going to win anything. And perhaps that's what people are okay with or what they want. But on this podcast and these film breakdowns, we try to show you what it looks like if you're trying to navigate for the ceiling, not just for adequate. And right now, Emory Jones just is not a high enough level starting quarterback for Florida. There are other issues, of course, on offense than just that. But you typically are only as good as your quarterback is when it comes to looking at championship caliber teams. You have to have you have to have a guy who can sling the ball around and attack a defense in enough ways that they cannot just sit on your tendencies. That caught up with Florida in this Kentucky game. They ran out of window dressing. They ran out of sneak attacks. They ran out of things that teams couldn't adequately prepare for. The windows got small. The plays got tough. And ultimately, they took an L. That's all for now. I apologize for the length. This video was super long. If it was way too long for you, please write to me and let me know. I ideally would like to make them shorter. Uh, sometimes I just get carried away going through all the plays, over analyzing things. At any rate, let me know. I'd love to find that sweet medium. Uh, again, as always, if you like the content, subscribe to this channel, follow us on social media, check out the podcast, and of course, consider dropping us a dono. Until next time, I'm James from the Gator Nation Football Podcast.